Hello, my name is David Meitzwinkle. I am the president of New Jersey 9-11 Aware. We are at Douglas College, New Brunswick, New Jersey today doing an outreach with students on the 9-11 issue. Douglas College is one of 50 all-women colleges in the United States and part of Rutgers University, this state university. Ironically, we are attempting to teach the students something about history and civics, which their college professors should teach them. During the Vietnam War education was often in the streets, not the classroom. The streets were for a time the classroom. 9-11 is still a vibrant issue. A proper investigation was never done, and the real criminals behind the crimes at the World Trade Center complex, the Pentagon, and Shanksville, as well as the anthrax attacks, are still at large preparing more terrorist events. While American civil liberties and constitutional rights are being attacked like never before, New Jersey has significant connection to 9-11. In the late 1960s and early 1970s, however, the young people changed the history of the war in Vietnam and our country and educated their parents back home. Now, 40 years later, the older people, the parents and grandparents who were part of that Vietnam War generation are attempting to educate the students. In the early 1970s, New Brunswick and especially Rutgers College across town became the center of anti-war activity throughout the state of New Jersey and was called by some of the Berkeley of the East, a reference to the free speech movement begun in Berkeley, California in the 1960s. After the invasion into Cambodia, which President Nixon lied about, and the shooting and killing of students at Kent State, New Jersey students descended into New Brunswick for anti-war activities from colleges throughout the state, down from Newark, up from Trenton. Students came here and marched through the streets. The university administrative offices were seized by students, including the office of the university president, Mason Gross. The National Guard was poised by the New Jersey governor to come onto campus, as they had done at Kent State. The clock was ticking. Mason Gross, the university president, would address the issues and make his position publicly clear at a news conference scheduled behind his office at Old Queens campus. There he addressed thousands of students across a large mall as far as the eye could see, a sea of student energy and power. No one knew what he would say, and then trained as a philosopher, he said, he was against the war in Vietnam and supported the student protest actions. He said the students were his guests and could use his office and equipment as they saw fit. He became an instant hero. And any possibility of tragedy by having the National Guard on campus was averted. A strong statement made by a university president. Today, the students walk around wired up to their iPhones and iPods and cell phones, seemingly disconnected. There are a number of wars in the Middle East, particularly in Iraq, where weapons of mass destruction were never found in Afghanistan. There are 28 pages of the joint congressional hearing co-chaired by former Senator Robert Graham, which detail in part the financing of the alleged terrorism. These pages were blacked out by President Bush and President Obama, who promised to declassify the pages, has refused to. Congressmen can review the 28 pages if they have the proper security clearance. They view it in a private room with a guard sitting across from them. Cannot take notes nor speak to anyone about the content. Needless to say, congressmen who have viewed the 28 pages were shocked at what the 28 pages revealed and want the pages disclosed to the public. House Resolution 14 or H.R. 14 making its way in Congress now would do that. No one seems to know about this. Very recently, Richard Lambert, an FBI whistleblower with the FBI for 24 years, was in charge of the Marathrex investigation involving anthrax attacks after 9-11. He said in a lawsuit filed in federal court that his investigation was obstructed by the FBI and that there was exculpatory evidence that the FBI had which showed that scientist Bruce Invins, who allegedly committed suicide before he was charged, was not guilty of the crime. We are talking with students, giving them educational material and DVDs 
was question the official story. We are hoping somehow to spark some interest in New Jersey among college students that will eventually lead to legislation for a new 9-11 investigation. It's a long shot. Would you like to help us? Go to nj911aware.org or call 609-336-7721. Thanks. Your help is needed.